freely, freely you have received, freely, freely give. Thank you.
Thanks again, Lord, for the opportunity we have to come before you and worship and thanksgiving for all you are and all you do. Help us to continue worshiping you in spirit and truth. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This morning we have our brother Mike Hernandez read the message. Praise God, my brothers and sisters. It's great to be here once again. It's always a blessing for me when I come to share the word with you folks. And I pray that uh, what I receive from the Lord will, will bless you and encourage you as, as you follow the Lord. I pray that He will just give us wisdom and knowledge of the things we need to do as we see the days approaching. Amen. The truth is, that the end of all things are near. I mean, if we look at if we look at the times, we look at the things that are going on around us. It seems like the end of all things are near. And I want to share this message with you because I think it's important for us as believers in Christ to be prepared for the coming of the Lord. We have to be prepared. Okay? This is the truth. And correct me if I'm wrong. Okay? Do you think we are closer now to the coming of the Lord than when we first believed? Yes. I think so. You know? No one knows for sure when the Lord will return. But we must live our lives as if He were going to come today. We must live according to His Word. We must follow His Word because His Word is true. You know? The Word is inspired by the Spirit upon men so that we would have knowledge of things to come, so that we would understand the things that we need to do as we follow Christ. The Apostle Peter gives us some great advice on how we should conduct ourselves as we see the days approaching. Now before I go on, I have to do this. My wife said to say hello to everybody. <laughs> She's on the coast. Praise God. I wish I could have went with her. But she's over there enjoying herself with the ladies, our ladies group there at the church. They all went, about 16 of the ladies went. They had her having a good old time. She sent me pictures and I was so envious. <laughs> and no, I'm not supposed to be envious, but boy, I sure was. I was like, man. You know, but, but I praise God that she's able to go and have a good time with the ladies. So, I want to share with you 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 7 through 11. And you know, I, 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 in prayer, you know, we, we need to seek God's wisdom and understanding of things in the Word so that we can if God allows us to share these things, we can, we can give it, we can give it and, and allow God's word to minister to those who hear it. Amen? So here it goes. 1 Peter chapter 4, starting in verse 7. The end of all things is near. Therefore be alert and sober mind, and of sober mind, so that you may pray. Above all, love each other deeply, because love covers over a multitude of sins. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, they should do so as the one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God provides, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. My brothers, if we look around our world today and we see all the stuff that's going on, 
it makes you wonder and think about and say, Lord, <laughs> I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Stuff is tough right now. Now, like I said, I don't know when the Lord's coming back. You know, people have been saying the Lord's going to come back for centuries now. But we don't know. The Word of God says that one, year is, one day is like a thousand years. So we don't know. But we wait expectantly upon the coming of the Lord. And if we take the words of Peter here and what he tells us, he tells us to be alert to all that's happening around us. Let us be sober-minded so that we can pray. We have to be alert. We have to be wise to what's going on around us. You know? We, we cannot let, we have to be vigilant and watchful and be on our guard. So that way we're not deceived. The Word of God tells us that even in the end times, if possible, even the elect will be deceived. We do not want to be deceived. We want to be vigilant in our walking with the Lord. We want to follow him according to his word. We want to obey his word and seek him at all times as we wait for the coming of the Lord. He tells us, therefore be alert and sober mind us that you can pray. Prayer is like, the, is like the foundation of our lives. That's what keeps us going. If we, are, if we pray and we are, have a strong and clear mind, we should live, we should not live or conform our way to the pattern, to the patterns of this world. Romans 12, 2 says, Do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. We need to be, we need to understand that we can't conform to the things of this world. Because if we conform to the things of this world, my brothers and sisters, we will not have the understanding and the knowledge of how to pray. Who do we pray to? Do we just pray just to anybody? No, we pray to the God of glory. We pray to the God who gave us life. We pray to the God who forgave our sins. We, came, we, we, we pray to the God who is allowing us eternal life. That's who we pray to. He's not just any God. So we can't conform ourselves, especially our minds, to the patterns of this world. Because the, the world tells us, have it your way. The world tells us, do unto others before they do unto you. The world tells us, love yourself above everybody else. That's not what the Word of God tells us. The Word of God tells us to love one another. The Word, the word of God tells us, to trust Him and Him alone. And not lean on our own understanding, but lean on Him. And if, and if we learn, if we learn to do this, then we will not be conformed to the patterns of this world. Our minds will understand that we have to trust God in everything. We're doing a study at, in, on Wednesday night in our Bible study there at the church on trusting God. And you, you, know, you know what I'm learning? And you know I've been serving all this. You know what I'm learning? It's not just trusting God in the big things. It's trusting God in the little things. And if we trust God in the little things, then we're going to learn to trust Him in the big things. And it's about putting all our hope and all our trust in God. And coming before Him so that we can pray, Father, help me. Help me to live according to your will. Help me to follow you according to what you have for me. And not my own will. Because our will, and I don't know if any of you have ever tried this, but whenever I try to do my will, I mess it up. So it's not about my will, it's about his will. Because he knows what's best for us. He knows what he needs to do to make our lives pleasing to him. And if, and if we follow him, then we will pray as Jesus prayed, 
when he was in when he was in Gethsemane, he prayed, Father, if this cup can pass me, then let it pass. But if it but if not, let your will be done, not mine. I want to do God's will. You know, and some, sometimes, you know, we, we we have a tendency to say, Lord, I want to do your will, but when it comes to us doing his will, we don't want to do it. You know, we want to do our own thing. And it's not about that. It's about following God and letting him do the things that need to be done in us. Our minds need to be changed. Remember this, my brothers and sisters, remember this, okay? If you want to do God's will, remember this. 2 Corinthians 5.17 Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, the old has gone. If we want to do God's will, then we must get rid of that old self, that old man, and put on the new man that is in Christ Jesus so that we can continue going forward in the plans that he has for us. And if, our, and if our mind, and if we are new, if we are new, then we're going to pray to the God that we trust. And we're going to say, Lord, I trust you. Whatever situation I'm in, I know that I'm in your hands. And if I'm in your hands, you know what's best for me. Hello? It's true, right? Does God, does not our God know what's best for you? Has he not always blessed you even when things were hard and you were struggling? Did not the God of glory, was he not by your side? If he says, I'm never going to leave you nor forsake you, guess what that means? He's never going to leave you nor forsake you. He's going to be with that. He's going to be with you all the time. You are never going to be alone. Even when you're laying in the hospital bed by yourself at night and only the nurse is coming to see you, guess what? You are not alone. He's right there. He's right there in the room with you. How many of you have ever sat with anybody in the hospital? Anybody? Okay. Just like when you sit in a room at a hospital with somebody, that's how Jesus Christ is with you at the hospital when you're at the hospital by yourself. When you think you're by yourself. You are not alone. And at that moment, you can pray and say, Lord, you see me right now. You see the situation I'm in. He's going to give you a sound mind to pray unto him with understanding and knowledge. And say, Father God, you are my strength. You are my hope. You are my promise. I have the promise of eternal life in your name. And I'm going to hold on to that because I am not going to conform to the patterns of this world telling me that this is the way it has to be. Because you have the final word. Our God always has the final word. And if we are following him as, as his children, then we're going to allow him to do the work in our lives. And we're going to say, Lord, if this is your will, then okay. We have to do that. I've had to learn this. This is not something that you get saved and all of a sudden you know it all. This is a learned process. You go through stuff and you learn. Right? Right? Isn't, isn't that how it's always been in our lives? We go through stuff, either we learn, <laughs> either we learn and we press on, or we don't and we go through the same stuff over and over and over again. Right? That's what happens in our lives. You know? How are we going to learn? Are we going to say, Lord, teach me once and I'm good? Or are we going to say, Lord, I know you're trying to teach me something, but I still want to do my thing. That's not how it works. God in his mercy will allow you to go through stuff over and over and over and over again if you don't learn. I don't know why the Lord brought this to me, but, but uh, you know, he, he really spoke to my heart concerning this. 
You know? This is the truth, my brothers and sisters. We have to think differently. We have to behave differently. We have to talk differently as we live according to God's pleasing and perfect will. As we live by his standards, let us pray. Paul reminds us in his writings to the Corinthians on how we should be living. Check, check out what Paul says. 1 Corinthians 16, 13, he says, Be on your guard. Stand firm in the faith. Be courageous. Be strong. You know, so Paul is telling us, hey, you're going to go through stuff. But pray to me. And I will help you. I will help you go through the stuff that you're facing right now. Call on my name. And I will hear you. I believe, this is, this, this is what I believe, my brothers and sisters. And I believe it with, with all my heart. That when I call under the God of glory, the one who saved my soul, the one who forgave my sins, when I call unto him, I know he has an attentive ear towards my prayer. I have no doubts. You know why I have no doubts? Because I have seen him move in my wife and my, in my life over and over and over again. I have seen what he has done. I've gone through stuff, operations, you know, but here I am standing before you. Because I, I called out to my God and said, Lord, I don't know what to do. How many of you have ever done that? Lord, I don't know what to do. You ever done that, sister? I don't know what to do. I have no clue what to do. But then he sends his angels, maybe in in as as a person coming to you, someone, a friend or, or a brother in Christ or, or your husband or your wife, and they pray for you. And all of a sudden, things seem to be better. Or you call out to God, and he answers you specifically to your situation. I have seen it happen. So I know that my God lives. I have no doubts in my mind that I can pray to my Father in heaven, and he hears me when I ask him in the name of Jesus Christ. Because Jesus told us. Didn't Jesus tell us? Jesus told us, if you ask the Father, our Father in heaven, if you ask the Father anything in my name, he will do it for you. He told us that. But here's the question. Do you believe it? And then, and then he says, if you ask me anything in my name, I will do it for you. Do you believe that? The thing is, coming before the Lord with an attitude of, yes, Father, I know that you hear me, and I will pray unto you with a sound mind, with confidence that you are going to hear my prayer. I believe that. But I also believe that sometimes he answers us, but he doesn't answer us according to the way we want him to answer us. You know why? Because he knows what's best for us. He knows what we need. And sometimes he doesn't give us the answers that we want. And that's okay. That's called trusting in God in every situation. Coming before him and saying, Father, I know that you live. And I know that you know me. All, all of you have accepted Christ as your personal Savior, correct? So if you have accepted Christ as your personal Savior, He knows you. He knows you when you get up in the morning. He knows you when you're driving to work or when you're, well, like sometimes for me, I'm retired. I'm, he knows me when I get up and I go, I go and I feed my dogs and I, and I, and I make breakfast for my wife. Yes, she loves that. I, I call her my queen. I'll tell you what, the other day, 
the other day I was making breakfast for her, and she came in and she sat down at the table. And she's sitting there and she's, you know, nice and quiet, and she's sitting there at the table drinking her coffee. And she looks at me, and I go, yes, my queen, can I help you? <laughs> you know, because she was sitting there waiting for her breakfast, you know, because she knew I was making her breakfast. You know? Because I love my wife. She's an amazing woman. And, 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 I have, and I have no troubles at all making her breakfast or dinner because I'm the one at home. So I have no, I have no problems making her, making her meals for her. So she's my queen. And I treat her such. You know? But I have it in my heart that when I pray for her, God hears it. And this is why. See, this, this, is how, this is how I know. This, this is how I know. God, God, hears, God hears the prayers of his people. There have been times when my wife has been sick. She'll be, she'll be laying in bed and sick, and she goes, babe, I can't sleep. I don't feel so good. I said, okay, well, let's pray. So I lay my hands on her, and I pray for her, and I die. She's asleep. Just that quick. And I, and I asked her, babe, are you, asleep? are you sleeping because you're bored of my prayer? Or is God actually touching your life? He said, well, God's touching my life. I said, okay. You know? that, that, that's, why, that's why I believe that, that our prayer works. You know? But we have to be, we have to have a, a certain attitude in our prayer. You know, we, we, can't, we can't just come to the Lord in prayer and say, Father, if, if you're there, hear my prayer. We can't come to the Lord like that. That, 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 shows, that. that shows that you have a spirit of doubt. That you don't believe that God can hear your prayer. I don't believe that way. When I, when I come to the Lord, and, and, and my, my, my brother-in-law told me one time, he goes, he goes, he goes Mike, I go, what? He says, I prayed for dinner. I prayed for our food. And he goes, Mike, I go, what's going on? He goes, you pray like you're talking to God. I said, well, I am talking to God. I'm praying that he would bless our food, that he would bless our time together. <laughs> so why shouldn't I pray like I'm talking to God? I'm talking to the one who, who gave us life. And if I'm talking to him, it should be like I'm talking to you, brother. Right? It should be like I'm talking to you. I'm not talking to the wind. You know, I'm not talking out into space. I'm talking to the God of glory. I'm talking to the Savior of our souls. And I will talk to him because he is my God and he hears my prayers. And that's how we have to pray. Trusting him in all things. Jesus said, told his disciples in Luke 21, 36, he said, be always on the watch and pray that you may be able to escape all that is about to happen, that you may be able to stand before the Son of Man. That's Jesus telling us. Be on your watch, be on guard and pray. You know what, if Jesus is telling us to pray, what should we be doing? We should be praying. I, I am so blessed by my brother, your wonderful husband. When he gets up there and prays, you know why I'm blessed when he prays? When I come and he prays? I'm blessed because I know his heart is praying with sincerity. That's why, that's why I love you, your husband. Because he prays with sincerity. He doesn't play around. Because he knows the power of prayer. Paul wrote in Ephesians 6.18, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayer and requests. With this in see, I, I love this. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for the Lord's people. Be alert. Be praying. I mean, I love the fact that you folks are praying for the, the, the other folks here in church, the people that aren't here. Continue to pray for them. And God's going to answer your guys' prayers. Pray for one another. 
I praise God because when I talk to my, my brother Bob, he you know he tells me, he says, he says, Brother Mike, I'm praying for you. Oh, thank you, brother. I need that. I, I, I cherish your prayers because that encourages me knowing that someone is praying for me. So pray for one another. Don't ever stop praying for one another. Be a church of prayer because your prayers are touching somebody's lives. There's a song, there's a song uh, that goes like goes something like this. I was dead in my sins and I was going through all these struggles but someone was praying for me. Someone was praying for me. And when you're going through that, when you're going through stuff in your life, trust that someone's praying for you. Trust that your husband's praying for you, that your wife's praying for you, that your kids are praying for you, that your church is praying for you, that our Father in heaven and His Son, His Son Jesus Christ, is praying for you to our Father in heaven. Because He says that in John. He says, I don't, he, he says, I don't only pray for my disciples, but I pray for those who will believe what they say. You know who that is? That's you. That's you. Because you believe because of what the apostles wrote out of the Bible. Right? So if you believe, then Jesus was praying for you way back then. Over 2,000 years ago, Jesus was praying for you. Praise God. Check this out. James chapter 5, 16 says, The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. So your prayers are powerful and effective. They touch people's lives. Not by what you do, but what God does through the power of your prayer, prayer for other people. Pray. Don't ever stop praying. Because your prayer is effective and powerful to bring change in the lives of other people. Amen? Number two, let us love one another. So the first one was what? Prayer, be alert. And pray. That was the first one. Second one. Let us love one another. Above all, love each other deeply because the love covers a multitude of sins. Let us love one another as Christ loved us. As his love is far reaching. His love reached from eternity to now into eternity. That's how far reaching his love is. And we must love each other the same. His love covered our sins on Calvary over 2,000 years ago. Jesus gave us a command to follow. And we must be faithful to his teachings. Check out the command of the Lord. Okay, I want you to see this. This is the command of the Lord. Not my command, but the Lord's command. This is what it says. In John 13, 34, and 35. A new command I give you. That you love one another. As I have loved you, that you may love, one, that you also love one another. By this, all will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. Praise God. See, but see, but it, 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 it's, there's something powerful right here in the scripture. He says, a new command I give you, that you love one another as I have loved you. Christ loved you unto death. Christ loved you in the ultimate sacrifice to give us life. And if, and if he's given us an example of how we should love, then we should love each other the same way. You know, doesn't, doesn't, Jesus, doesn't the word of God say, there is, there is no greater love than this, that a man should give his life for his friends? If there's no greater love than that, why shouldn't we love that way? The Word of God also teaches us, it, <laughs> it also teaches us that if you love as the pagans do, what good is that for you? For even they love one another. You're supposed to love beyond that. 
You're supposed to love unconditionally. How many have ever gotten mad at somebody and said, I ain't going to love that person never, ever, 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 ever again? <laughs> Did Jesus say that about you? Did Jesus say, ah, oh, man, you sinned today, buddy. I ain't going to forgive you for that one. You're done. He never said that. If we love unconditionally, we're going to love even when people do us. Oh, man, it's going to be hard. You're going to love even when people do us wrong. You're going to love them. Because when you love them when they do you wrong, it's like you're putting hot coals on their heads. Because you're loving them unconditionally. You're not putting a condition on them that, hey, well, if you, if you give me a brother, I love you so much, I love you even more if you give me $1,000. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. You know, we, have to, we have to love one another unconditionally without any conditions in, involved in our caring for one another. You know? But for some people, that's hard. But why shouldn't it be? When Christ gave us the perfect example of how we are to love one another. You know? Because here's, here's something. Denise, how much do you love Bob? This much? I love him this much. Right? But if he, but if, but if he was, if he was, if if he did something that made you mad, so mad that you wanted to strangle him, which maybe more than once a month, <laughs> you know what I mean? Would you still love him? I've been there for forty-nine years. Praise God! Praise God! Forty-nine years. Well, see, that, that's, that's, that's the kind of love that, that God is talking about. You're going to love him no matter what. You know? Even when he's, when he's not such a nice guy. But he's always a nice guy. He's always a nice guy to me. So. <laughs> but I don't live with him. So. But, but, but that's the thing. You know, we, we, have, we, have to love, we have to love in that manner. You know? And no matter what people do, you still got to love them. Because, because they're... Because you were just like them at one time. Or maybe we're still like them today. And God still loves us. You know? He didn't, he didn't, he didn't, he doesn't, he doesn't make, he, he's not a house that we He's not a respecter of man or thing. He's going to love you just the way you are. And he'll always love us just the way we are. Because by the power of the Spirit, then our lives change. And then we become better by the power of the Spirit. Yeah. So remember, my brothers and sisters, love one another. Always. I've, 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 known, <laughs> I've known people who, even family members who got, in, got in an argument 25 years ago and I asked him, well, where, where, why did you guys get in an argument? I don't know. So how come you're still mad at him? I don't know. That doesn't make no sense. You know? It doesn't make, to me, to me it doesn't make any sense to still be mad at a person that, that just up 25 years ago and you don't even remember why you got mad in the first place. You gotta love him. Right? Third one. Use a gift that God has given you. Offer hospitality to, the, to one another without grumbling. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faith, faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. What gift has God given you? We've all been given gifts by God. Gifts to give him honor and glory. Check out what Romans chapter 12, verse 6 says, 6, 7, 8. In his grace, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. So if God has given you the ability to prophesy, speak out as much with as much faith as God has given you. If your gift is serving, then serve them well. If, if you are a teacher, teach well. If your gift is encouraging others, be encouraging. 
If it is giving, give generously. If God has given you leadership ability, take the responsibility seriously. If you have a gift of showing kindness to others, do it gladly. This is, and I encourage you to use the gift God has given you. Every one of us has been given a gift from God of a divine nature for the honor and glory of God to do his perfect will. And if, and if we have that ability, whether it's giving, whether it's prophesying, whether it's teaching, whether it's encouraging, whether it's leadership, whatever that gift that God has given you, use the gift. He has given us the gifts for the edification of the church so that we can lift up the church. We have been given certain gifts. What is your gift? You know, some people say, I've, I've had people tell me, well, brother, I'm old now. I, 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 can't, I don't have any gifts. I go, what are you talking about? You have, the, you have a gift of wisdom. Use that gift. You have experienced life. God has given you life and you've experienced so many different things. Use that gift to encourage others. <clears throat> we have been given a gift. I, I, I learned many years ago that for the honor and glory of the Lord of the gift that he gave me. Because when I was like, I don't know, 13, 14 years old, I went to a seminary, a Catholic seminary. And when I was at that seminary, I felt in my heart that I wanted to be a priest. That was, that was my heart's desire, to serve God in that capacity. But God had different plans. He had different plans for me. Because I met a girl. And that changed everything. Because you know, priests don't get married, right? Priests, priests don't get married. But I met a girl and I fell in love. So that changed everything. But it didn't change the calling that God had on my life to serve Him. And that was my gift to serve Him and to serve others. To share the gospel of Jesus Christ. To preach the word. To teach the word. To encourage others to continue in their walk with the Lord. That is what I have been called to do by God. What is your gift? My brother was a pastor for many years. That was a calling from God. That was a gift that God gave him to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, to be a missionary. And that's what he did for many years. My brother is a pastor called by God to preach the gospel. My brother is a teacher called by God to be a teacher. My sister is a, a musician to share to share the gospel through music. My young brother uh, is a prayer warrior to pray for one another. You know? What is your gift? Do you, do you know that we have one of the greatest ministries in our own home? We have one of the greatest ministries in our own home. You know what that is? That's ministering to our entire family. Ministering to our children, to our grandchildren, to our great-grandchildren. Sharing the gospel with them. Showing them the love of God. Being an encouragement to them. That is a ministry that a lot of people don't even use anymore. But that is a great responsibility that we have. To teach and to show people the love of God. Great ministry. And I encourage you that if you still have loved ones at home, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, use that gift that God has given you to minister to them. Because this has been given by God. Check out Ephesians 4.11. So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and teachers to equip his people for, for works of service, 
so that the body of Christ may be built up. How many of you are pastors? How many of you are teachers? How many, are, how many of you are evangelists or prophets or apostles? This is for the education of the church, for lifting up of the church. Not the building, but each other. I'm pretty sure, I, I, I can look around right now and I'm, and I, and I can, and I can, and I'm pretty sure I can pick out those who are encouragers, those who encourage one another, those who give, those those who minister, those who have a gift of administration. You know, you guys have gifts. Use them. Don't be afraid. Just because you may be older doesn't mean nothing. Use the gift that God has given you for the edification of the church, for lifting each other up. Amen? The last section on 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 11. If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God provides so that in all things, God may be praised through Jesus Christ to him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. If you speak, if you speak, if you teach the word, do it with authority and the power that God has given you through the Holy Spirit.